I recall the uh, July 28th meeting of the Raytown Charter Commission to this order. It is 6.40 p.m. Um, Lisa, can you take a roll call?
Seven. Craig Walters. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. No. Charlotte Nelson. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Ted Bowman. Uh, yes. Jason Green. Yes. Jeff Asher. Yes. Susan Dolan. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Mary Jane Van Busker. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Thanks, Emerson. Yes. Or can we have a treasurer's report, please, and then an update on the sub, uh, budget subcommittee? Uh, the treasurer report, July 28th. The balance is still 9,900 ml. Uh, of course, we're going to $100 reduction. Uh, consensus is around 17,000 to the charter. Uh, that includes uh, marketing, mailing, printing, uh, attorney fees. Uh, we're looking to spend between 14 and Hopefully, we come closer to twenty thousand than the or the fourteen thousand than the twenty thousand, and that's all I've got in the board. We'll make a formal presentation to the board at the next meeting, and um, for the discussion and approval of the board. So, okay, old business. Uh, we have a continuation of. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, We need a, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a roll call vote on the uh, treasurer's report and the budget committee report, please. Motion, uh, Stephen, motion to approve the budget and treasury reports. I second them. Mary Jane Van Busker. Yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. Any discussion on that? We'll have further discussion in the next budget subcommittee. Yes. I, I was not at the meeting and I really wondered how we reached consensus. How many people were at that meeting? Uh, Mark was, Jim was, I was, and Mary Jane was. Four out of five. We went through each. Make the consensus. Uh, yes. After three meetings, that you will only spend fourteen thousand dollars. We have a range, and we can go over it after the meeting. I'll go over it after the meeting with you, Greg. Yes. Because there's other things in there that I think should be covered in the budget. I think they discuss it. We really need an attorney to give us some guidance on some of these questions. That's part of what we're stumbling over. Calling out and going slow on. So it, those things are part of the budget. That's correct, and we, we have allocated plans for that. But are we hiring someone? That would be yeah. We talked about that in our subcommittee meeting, and that is a decision of the, the board here, not the subcommittee. I agree. When will we start that discussion? We will start it at the next meeting. Next meeting? Yes. Motion to approve the budget and treasury reports. Mary Jean Van Busker. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Charlotte Nelson. Yes. Mark Moore. Yes. Jim Major. Yes. Greg Walters. No. Tim Bowman. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Susan Dolan. No. Lisa Emerson. Um, All right, we will now continue with a item section 1.2 restrictions that was tabled from last week. Uh, Lisa, I'm going to allow you to present your final version to the committee. Uh, we'll open it up um, from after she has a chance to present it. I know this is a hot item. Uh, and I know that there's also a, uh, a variation that will also be proposed, so uh, let, let's, let's let Lisa read her version. If there is a motion to uh, print that and second it, then we will uh, have 
further discussion on it and then go from there. So, uh, Lisa, it's all yours. I would like to defer to Janet for her version. Janet, please. Thank you. Um, I've worked on revising it. Really? Anybody else? Okay. Hello? Are you, can you hear me? Oh, you can help me. Uh, I've worked on, on this and, and have cut it down some, and hopefully it will be acceptable. 1.2 restrictions affirming that the protection of the people is the principal office of the government. The city shall not abridge or infringe upon any person's inhabitants or business freedom, whether popular or unpopular of speech, of the press, to peacefully assemble, to peacefully live as desired, to keep and bear arms, or to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Uh, violate the right of any person and have no history to be secure in their own life, person, home, effects, and any property concerning them with intrusion, search, or seizure. Um, take into account origin, ethnicity, race, color, sex, gender, creed, religion, or disability, nor deny the inherent quality of any person, inhabitant, or visitor, or and then relinquish its power or its affirmed protection of life, liberty, property, or proper or privacy of the people to any other authority without express permission of the people by a vote of the people. There's no motion yet. That she was ready. No motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Exactly. One way or the other. All right, I'm going to open up the uh, commission for discussion on this article. Okay, then we're going into the discussion now. Hold on a second. Who would like to speak to the motion? I think these are things that, that should be in the charter that are important. Greg, did you want to add anything else? Yes, and actually, um, I, I agree that these are all very important rights, and I, don't, I think it's important that we enumerate them. I don't think it deserves to have any more uh, discussion, or not any more uh, attention than, than this one small paragraph here in Article 1, and then we're through with the rest of the chart. But what I would like to ask the Commission to do is uh, go ahead and vote on this item. I, I see that there's always a lot of confusion when people start jumping in and trying to amend something in midstream, uh, typically when the amendments really aren't friendly in nature to the original motion, it just causes confusion. And that's to my way of thinking, it would be better just to go ahead and vote on this. If it passes, the item is done, we can move on to the next item. If it doesn't pass, then we'll go to the next motion. And that's exactly what we're going to do tonight. So, plan. it is a plan. Okay. All right, so there's been a motion and a second as to the reading that Janet had on restrictions, section 1.2 of Article 1. Uh, I will open up the uh, for discussion on this article, this section. I just want to mention that I, I do have a, I wrote one myself as well, and I will, uh, you guys can pass this down, right here, section 1.2. I know we're voting on, the motion was made to vote on Ms. Emerson's version, but I did want to make this commission know that uh, I have prepared an alternative as, as well to uh, to discuss if, uh, if such uh, motion is uh, defeated by uh, Ms. Emerson. If Ms. Emerson's motion is defeated, then we have one that I'd like to present. So. Uh, I won't get into reading that now, uh, but obviously if it's defeated, then I will read mine and make a motion to approve it. Okay, is there other discussion? Go ahead, Tim. I saw two words changed in, in this in the last week. Is that accurate? Well, I, I went through it also, and I saw that in uh, Section B, they took out to hold authority over and, and then in C, they took out the sexual orientation 
Am I correct with that, Jim? And then is there any other changes? From Lisa's original? Is that what you concurred in too, Ted? That those are the only changes. Right.
sexual orientation was removed um, because there might have been one person uncomfortable, with, or at least one uncomfortable with um, iron fire based. That wasn't uncomfortable for iron or fire based on their sexual orientation. Um, the, the point of this is just um, to make sure that we cover everything that it isn't covered in the, um, in, in the statutes we have now because, for instance, um, I don't think we have sexual orientation. You could, for instance, hire or fire a uh, city administrator based on whether you're straight, um, which would be awkward, but it's a possibility if it's not in there. Um, so I was just trying to, when I originally wrote that line, I was trying to cover everything, but as I understand it, my mother, when she was uh, working on it, took that out because someone was uncomfortable with that. So, um, but that's the gender sex difference, theoretically. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, my question is this is one more encompassing than the other in terms of in terms of sex more encompassing than gender in the text as it's used here? Because if we're just repeating the same thing. Very well. Okay. And secondly, in case I you know, for clarity and to do away with the dynasty and we can make one more word, I would make a motion to remove the word sex to just take the word gender. Oh, Okay, hold on, hold on. Susan would like to speak one more time. This is a, a, an issue where if we're not an attorney, the attorney can help to clarify and shed further light on the matter uh, regarding this need or lack thereof. And I think that for the time being, uh, that's something that we should place for someone of a higher level of understanding to, to make a potential judgment on or clarification on for us. Alright, um, Janet? I'm going to make my motion to um, take the word sex out of the document. Okay. And one last, uh, go ahead, Mary Jane. Well, I stated this last week, I'm, or two weeks ago, and I'm going to say it again. I think the whole thing needs to be removed. I think we're, we're working on lawsuits here, and I don't feel comfortable putting any of it in there. I stated it before, and I'll state it again, and that's how I feel about it. Any other comment before Mark? Yeah, I would disagree with Mary Jane. You know, <coughs> this is what we're talking about. The rights and, and, and that's what these uh, restrictions are about. Uh, now the 1.2 I believe in, from the Gmail version, it basically affirms the, uh, the Constitution of the United States of America Bill of Rights, which is fine, but uh, we're actually writing a, uh, an article, a Constitution for Raytown citizens. Uh, whether there's a couple of words that need to be struck out of uh, uh, Janet's version is yet to be seen, uh, but I, I really appreciate the, the language in this thing, you know, violate the right of any person, an amateur, visitor, etc. And I think that people, in, uh, for the most part, would appreciate that, uh, because you don't see that very often anywhere you go. Uh, I could go on for, for a while on, on examples, but I'm not. <clears throat> but I think we all understand where that's coming from. Uh, but again, it's, it's, this is a charter for the people to read and to understand and like, and I think that they'll like this language. Jim? I guess my understanding is, if we want to build rights, why are we omitting some of the bill of rights that are in the true bill of rights, the federal constitution? Um, does this imply then that, for example, we don't have the right to bear arms in Raytown? I mean, that's the question. Um, why, why are they not all there? Why are we stunned in there? Um, that's a fair question. I mean, so this first is the entire U.S. Constitution. Susan? I concur that this, this is a legal document for the city of Raytown, and therefore the uh, components contained within Article 1 
are um, pertinent to what we're working on. It's a legal document, and we're ensuring the rights of the citizens of the city. Thank you. All right. Any other further discussion before we take a vote? Yes, sir. I have clarification. Greg's motion to, on his motion, did not get a second, is that correct? My motion, he said. But the amendment has not been seconded. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. So that has been amended by both of you to remove sex from the line on 1.2. Correct, and that's what we're voting on as a whole section 1.2 restrictions. Okay, thank you. Any other further discussion? Take a vote. Lisa, call the roll. Charlotte Nelson? No. Mark Moore? Yes. Jim Major? No. Lisa Anderson? Yes. Ted Bowman? No. Janet Emerson? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? No. Mary Jane Gunbusker? No. Michael McDonough? No. Susan Dolan? Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. Steve Gunther? Jason Green? No. What is the final vote, please? Five, four, eight against. Is that correct? That's what we meant. Okay, so that was for the amendment.
Um, I can't really speak to that much more. But anyway, I decided to write a restriction section, and uh, I did like uh, the opening line in Ms. Emerson's uh, suggestion, so I made it a little more simpler and something that I felt that um, I felt would not only pass with this commission, but something that I felt would also uh, be beneficial to the city, because I do believe there should be something in there uh, in terms of restrictions of power. So I will go ahead and read my version. It's on the document that says Gmail at the top. Steve, Mr. Gunther, rather, was gracious enough to print this off for me. Uh, it says, 1.2 restrictions, affirming that the protection of the people is the principal office of government. The city shall not abridge or infringe upon the freedoms of any person expressed in the Constitution of the United States of America or its Bill of Rights or expressed in the Constitution of the State of Missouri. Uh, so that is what I'm presenting, and I will yield to discussion. I have to make the motion approved. Second. Okay, the motion was made by Jim to approve as it is. And Barry Jim, was that you? Sandy. Sandy, okay, thank you, Sandy. Okay, we'll have a discussion now. Greg, go ahead. Yes. Thank you. One portion of what we just voted down was section B, which is which is not in Jason's version and it's probably the most important statement of the whole charter in which it says it will not be the charter or it will relinquish its power or its affirmed protection of life, liberty, property, or privacy of the people to any authority without express permission of the people by a vote of the people. What that does, what that does in a very straightforward manner, kind of actually kind of a long way around telling it, but what it, what it says is if you want to amend this charter, you have to go to the vote of the people. Now, if you go back and check all the charters that we have samples of, you'll find that to be a common denominator. I don't believe that it's in this charter except for right here. So what you'll have is a document that can then be gone in and piecemeal apart by the board of aldermen at any time. And show me where it's at. I, I can try to speak to that. You know, you um, show me where it's at. I'll be more impressed. Well, here's the deal. I mean, later on in the charter, we're going to have an opportunity to write out an amendment process for such. Because charters obviously have it set up to where you can, you know, have an initiative with, with such, and that's the amendment process with all with all charters and such in the state of Missouri. There's also statutes that defer to that. So I see what you're saying, but the point I'm making is that you know I really see that is not necessarily necessary in this section. I hear what you're saying, but I don't see what you're saying. And I've already been down this, we've all been down this path before where somebody swore that that was the right way to do it, and it turned out to be very wrong. It's um, an issue, is what it's um, called. Just, no, I mean, no, that's no. the point. I mean, it, no. you, amendments to, you amend the Constitution, the city, city charter, through an, the amendment process in which the people that's vote on such. people can outside of the elected body group, but you are taking away that protection right here. That's not even supposed to be listed in this. Many charters. Are under authority restrictions and powers? So, I'm going to ask you a question. If that's the case, since most city charters don't have a restriction section which labels that, then how can charters are amended by the people in other cities, even though they don't have that section? It can be by private petition. That's the point. They have that in the charter, in the body of the charter somewhere else. My point is that it can be amended otherwise if you don't specifically say that you cannot. We have, to include, we have to include a process for this, and that process will be okay, later on the charter. I, well, in view of that, Greg, you don't have that to show. Greg, we have other people. And we can later on, people have a process. Lisa, let's do it tomorrow. It's not a good Lisa, then Susan. Um, I, I would agree that, I think, I'm going to say that the Second, what was section D is absolutely necessary to this charter. It is reflexive in that it shows that no, really, the Board of Aldermen cannot just hand over the city government to um, Kansas City if they would want to, which theoretically they could do if they voted in that way and did not have a voter initiative to do so. Um, and that's the protection we have here for the citizens, um, that things that aren't taken by initiative of the voting public that could be taken by the board might infringe upon that. And so this is reflexive for the charter to protect, protect itself and the city as well. And so I would like to uh, motion an amendment to um, Jason's motion um, so that it reads as follows. 
Section 1.2 Restrictions, affirming that the protection of the people is the principal office of government, the city shall not a. abridge or infringe upon the freedoms, whether popular or unpopular, of any person, inhabitant or visitor, expressed in the Constitution of the United States of America or its Bill of Rights, or expressed in the Constitution of the State of Missouri, or b. relinquish its powers or its affirmed protection of life, liberty, property, or property or privacy of the people to any other authority without express permission of the people by a vote of the people. If anybody would like to second that. Second. All right, so what we have now is an amendment to Jason's, which will have to be acted on before we get back to Jason's. So, all discussion now goes to this amended version. So if you have discussion that you want to have regarding this, uh, again, there is substantial changes in how this is written, and I'd like Lisa to re-read it one more time because even section A has been changed. Uh, and I want to make I want to make sure everybody notes the change in section A. Section D basically remains as it is. So Lisa, please reread section A. Right, Sandy, second, Jason. Yeah. I didn't second this change. No, no, Jason's original. And if I get incorrect and how I'm going through this, somebody correct me, please, because it gets confusing. So I um, would like to speak to this and, and then, can you hear me? I would like to speak to this and then um, go through it. Um, this is what, this version that I'm reading is the version that uh, we came up with yesterday and that I was told uh, would work for everyone, theoretically, maybe, maybe not. Um, and so this is, uh, this is going by that, um, restrictions. Affirm that the first sentence is the very same. Affirming that the protection of the people is the principal office of government, the city shall not a. abridge or infringe upon the freedoms, whether popular or unpopular, of any person, inhabitant or visitor, expressed in the Constitution of the United States of America, or its Bill of Rights, or expressed in the Constitution of the State of Missouri, or b. Relinquish its powers or its affirmed protection of life, liberty, property, or privacy of the people to any other authority without express permission of the people by a vote of the people. So I just want to make sure everybody's clear on that. Any, any questions? I mean, she basically has taken what Jason had wrote and added a few words that were originally in section 1.2a basically the inhabitant of visitors uh, freedom whether popular or unpopular and then took out the rest and put in the Constitution of the United States of America Bill of Rights and so forth. So what they're what that's doing is affirming that everything is already covered underneath there and that this is that clear for everybody? I wish we had a printer so we could print this out. Any, any discussion? I just wanted to add, just yes, to clarify, what Lisa just read is what we're voting on as the amended motion. Correct? To, to Jason, yes. Okay, thank you. After which we're required to vote on it again as the original. Exactly. Mr. Chair? Yes, great. I'd like to just commentary from the members of the commission. Uh, I think that what she's offered does take in everything that Jason wrote in his. It also does include part that I was complaining about just a few minutes ago about not being able to, without the express permission of the people by the people, which does include your initiative re and referendum. And also it prohibits then the governmental body from just going ahead and doing it without permission. I believe that is important. That's one of the safeguards of the chart. Thank you, Greg. Any other, Susan? Oh, I just wanted to make, Lisa, I wanted to make sure that 
language is included. This has been read a couple of times. With regard to um, section 1.2, uh, line B, regarding the uh, protection of personal property rights, that is included yes. still in the language now. B reads, relinquish its powers or its affront protection of life, liberty, property, or privacy of the people to any other authority without express permission of the people by a vote of the people. What about uh, protection against unwarranted intrusion, search, and seizure? Uh, it's not in there. Why would we exclude that? You can, can we mentor them? Well, um, I think what people are, are getting at is that it's already included in our Bill of Rights and the Constitution. So is this the yeah. Okay. Okay. You just wrote this whole section down. Okay. And you're trying to bring back up again. Like, no, no, it's, it's completely oh, different. It really is different, Sandy. <clears throat> Basically, it eliminated B and C and combined B and C into by putting all the so-called individual rights back into the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights. So. All right, Jim. Um, I like what Jason wrote because originally the idea was to create in charge of to keep it simple. And, and that pertains, at least as clearly, to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Missouri. That covers everything in a nutshell. So I, I still like the, the shorter version. Unless you got something different to say, Susan, please. I mean, we need to go on. This is out of it. Go ahead. Jason's uh, original version to me uh, assures rights no greater than those Greytown is currently assured as a four class city. Ergo, uh, we're not building on just using the simplified language. Well, I, I want to, I want to, we're not discussing Jason's original run right now. We're discussing the amendment to Jason's.
All right, all right, that's not, that's not doing us any good. Any other discussion before we vote on this amendment to Jason's? All right, I'm going to call for a vote. Well, I'm going to add my two cents. <laughs> I happen to agree with the amendment. Uh, I think it is trying to uh, at least make a compromise. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I mean, we have to come up with a compromise here. We're not all going to agree perfectly with what's being said. But again, it's up to us to make a decision. And I, and I just happen to think that this amendment to Jason's is, is a good amendment. Uh, I believe in what Greg was saying. And uh, it was something that <clears throat> Jason and I talked about even yesterday. So uh, I, I'm okay with this. And, and uh, we'll go from there. Lisa, take a vote. Susan Dolan. This is on the amendment to Jason's version, the one that Lisa read. Yes. Jen Anderson. Yes. Greg Walters. Yes. Jim Major. No. Ted Bowman. Mark Moore? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? No. Mary Jane Van Busker? No. Steve Gunther? Yes. Michael McDonald? Yes. Lisa Anderson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Sandra Harwell? No. Jason Green? Yes. This motion, excuse me, this motion for the amended version it's now passed it is, as a vote of 9 to 4. Is that correct? All right, we'll move on to section 3.6C. I'm sorry. Thank you. The vote, the vote on the amended version uh, was 9 to 4. Correct? Well, that, that was my understanding, but I'm, I guess I'm being corrected. I mean, we would only go back to his, uh, to Jason's original version if it failed, correct? Uh, what would we be doing? Okay. You can withdraw. The Jason's original amendment, or <coughs> section 1.2, <coughs> has been removed. He removed it. Okay. We're now going to go to section 3.6c, is where we ended up last week, or excuse me, last meeting. Yes, sir. Um, so, according to Robert's Rules of Order, that's the way it's conducted. To offer an amendment. Yeah, I would. So, can you do that? Once you vote for the amendment, to, once you vote to amend it, then you don't have to vote for it again. That's what you're saying. Okay, I see what you're saying, Jim. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What Jim is saying is we voted for the amended version, and what he's saying now we have to, to, amend, to we amend, amend, we voted to amend it, and now we need to actually vote for it. Right. That's what.
But all that's on the table right now is his amended motion. A motion has been made by him, or, or a motion has been made to accept his version. And then a motion was made to amend that. And it's proper to a vote on the amendment. And if the amendment's passed, now we have to decide whether we accept the whole thing. Right. Okay. So you have to read the amendment. All discussion and vote. All right. Roll. Section 1.2, Restrictions. Affirming that the protection of the people is the principal office of government, the city shall not. A. Abridge or infringe upon the freedoms, whether popular or unpopular, of any person, inhabitant or visitor, expressed in the Constitution of the United States of America, or its Bill of Rights, or expressed in the Constitution of the State of Missouri. Or B. Relinquish its powers or its affront protection of life, liberty, property, property or privacy, of the people to any authority, other authority without express permission of the people by the of the people, which is what we, yeah, that's what we did. All right, we'll take a vote. Jamaica. Lisa Emerson, yes. Charlotte Nelson, no. Steve Gunther, yes. Mary Jane Van Busker, no. Susan Dolan, yes. Janet Emerson, yes. Ken Bowman, yes. Jason Green, yes. Sandra Hartwell, no. Green Walters, yes. Michael McDonough, yes. Mark Moore, yes. 
Jim, No. Motion passes. Section 1.2 is approved as written. We will now move on to qualification. Uh, you, uh, you brought up to me something that you wanted to look at in section 3.2. Oh, uh, well, no, no, did you want to yeah. make any other? I'm sorry. Comments? Okay, this is more clerical. Um, when, when, I, when we were going over some stuff looking yesterday um, on Article 3, um, we're, gonna, we're, we're making a separate article for the mayor, but in the conversation concerning the mayor, the mayor is, is technically a, uh, a member of the Board of Aldermen. Um, so under 3.2A, we call it composition, the way it's currently written, it says, composition, there shall be a Board of Aldermen consisting of 10 members elected by registered voters of the respective boards as provided in the uh, nominations and elections of article of this charter, and it's a, a future article we haven't written yet about how that process would look like. But um, the idea is that technically we need to include something else for the mayor, since the mayor technically, for whatever reasons, is on the board of aldermen who just happens to chair it. So the suggested amendment, instead of what I just read, pretty much said the same thing, except adding in the mayor. So let me read it. It says, Composition, there shall be a board of aldermen consisting of 10 aldermen and the mayor. The 10 aldermen members shall be elected by registered voters of the respective boards um, as provided in the uh, appropriate article of this charter. So, anyway, um, it's just adding the words and the mayor because the mayor is a member of, of, of that board. We forgot, we forgot to include that. Um, yeah. I make a motion to amend. Second. All right, discussion? Anybody have? All right, we'll have a vote then. I, I just need to know if I wasn't looking at what he was reading it because I was doing some housekeeping. Um, the things I need to look up about motioning after reading. I want to make sure that I didn't miss any words that it's what you read off the. Yeah, that's, okay. That's, that's, that's Yes, Janet, second.
I think as this reads, it says uh, if it's exceed if it exceeds one year, then there has to be a special election for it. So I I just want to make sure because sometimes there's the opinion that or the not heard the opinion stressed not particularly by anybody here that the city elections are you know in April or February you, you know and, and I I guess it, in, in simply saying in the next election would be the next election held. Uh, I, I just wonder if you want to pin that down a bit more. Well, I asked election held in the jurisdiction by the uh, Jackson County Election Board, or was there the ones that well, It says there, it says next regular municipal election, so next city well, city election. Well, this election pushed you back a year. Well, it depends when there's a vacancy. That's the thing. So that's why the language in the last part includes if, if the vacancy is longer than a year, then there needs to be a special election. The board needs to make arrangements for a special election. Well, like the instance I gave is, is as an intent, does that mean if we were in the same situation and you just held an election and you created a vacancy by somebody becoming mayor, mm -hmm. would you then hold the next election in August or November, or would you wait for a year? Well, okay, election? assuming that the municipal election was in, 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 obviously in April and the election for mayor there was what? When did she get elected? April. Oh, was it this last April? So <laughs> last April. Well, it's less than a year. <laughs> yeah. So then you, you should strike the next municipal election, just make it the next election. If we have that, that could be the August primary. It could be probably November. Yes. I mean, honestly, you know, I uh, this is this is you know a lot of this stuff's kind of you know I'm not trying to harp on ML thing, but they have that in there, and, and uh, it's, it seems. To find an avenue for a lot of these other municipalities in terms of how to handle that issue, because I can't even kind of touch it. Well, this is a municipal, I mean, unless I'm totally off base, that the municipal means city election. Well, that's the thing, yeah. The municipal does mean yeah. city election. Well, what you're doing, though, you, you end up with somebody appointed for the remainder of that term for an entire year. Right, and, and that's the way it's. If it's set up. Yeah. If it's set up. That's the way it's set up. Some cities, some cities, that this is evidence by independence, it's not set up. Also. But this does kind of this does follow the way we currently operate, though. If we're going to use that as our benchmark, well, I mean, remember that we should always look at it. But it, I mean, and then make the decision from there: is it a good system or not a good system? And I think in this case, it's a good system. I think that's why PC is getting to you. So it works. You think it's good? Okay, Jim. Go ahead. Yeah, I think one of the things that you take into account is. That even though there's another election coming up, if you add an invisible issue to the ballot, there's an additional, considerable additional cost to the city. Don't know what that is, but it's really a lot more than you would think it would be. Oh, I don't know. Depends on the Saving taxpayer dollars. Twenty-five grand. We have elections at the same time. Yeah, but the same time. Right. Yeah, the same Any other discussion? If there's no other discussion, I'll just take them. Yes, yeah, Susan, sorry. It just seems it would be it would be desirable to be able to hold an election uh, with you know with all haste, not haste, but as soon as possible without any unnecessary delays, so that people have uh, the possibility of electing somebody that they want to be on. Yeah. I was just thinking, I think Sandy touched on this. It depends upon the election that you're held. In August election, if you hold a, 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 a municipal item during the August election, it will cost you less than one held in a municipal election with fewer items because that's how they do bill from the election board is by the number of items on the ballot. So actually it would be a cost savings matter to have it held during a larger election. So what you're saying, delay, it could be that you would appoint for somebody for longer than a year? Then? No, sir. You would probably appoint for less because you generally have a, at least two elections a year, oftentimes more. So I, I think that it's something that we, we ought to consider. I'm, I'm trying to think of other cities. I know Kansas City's had special elections outside of the regular cycle. 
But I mean, this what Jason has clearly said here is shall appoint a qualified person to fill until the next regular municipal election. I mean, am I not wrong? I mean, am I wrong in that? Is he not covering it? All right. Well, no. I, I, well, I think you are wrong in that because I don't think it's the proper way to cover it. You're, you're supplanting an appointed person instead of an elected official. It's not the same. But you're only appointing a person for a short period of time. One year. Yeah, well, it's work. Go ahead. I think people take that into account when they're voting for the person before them. For example, in the independence, when they knew that they were voting for a councilman, to become mayor and become vacant, they did that knowing that. Um, and it is a short period of time. It's, it's, not, uh, um, it's not like you're taking away from the people the right they're going to come back and have to prove them later. Mm -hmm. Boy, that for a full terms up. In, in independence, they're moving post haste to the next election, which is August. If this same situation they were under our was that's being suggested here, you would wait an entire year before you could hold that election. That's correct. That's, what, yeah. that's what's being proposed. And that's really not, I don't think it's preferred way. But that's, that is your decision and your opinion. It well, might not be everybody. Uh, how are we going to do this? Is it Gary Moore giving some thought? No. I'm, no. It's, I I, hold on a second. Tom, oh, sorry. Question? Yes. Yeah. 
Scott Miller motion to make it. So moved. So I think Jason Jason moved. Jason moved. Jim seconded. Yeah, well, thank you. Any other discussion? We can't discuss. That's right. Sorry. All right. Let's take a roll call. Roll call, please. Would, would you like to read it again, Jason? Yeah, I'll read it again here. 3.6c, filling of vacancies. The Board of Aldermen, by a majority vote of its remaining members, shall appoint a qualified person to fill a vacancy until the next regular municipal election unless such period exceeds one year. In the latter case, the Board of Aldermen shall make arrangements for a special election to fill such vacancy for the unexpired term. Mary Jane Van Buskirk. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Janet Emerson. Yes. Charlotte Wilson. No. Mark Moore. Yes. Jim Major. Yes. Greg Walters. No. Ted Bowman. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Senator Hartwell. Yes. Michael McDonald. Yes. Susan Dolan. No. Lisa Emerson, uh, Epstein. Uh, section 3.6C, filling of vacancies, has passed. We'll move on to 3.7, judge of qualifications. Jason, do you want to read? Yes, and uh, I'm reading, the, I'm going to add, add the word here from the copy we have about the election. So, uh, just listen here. It says 3.7, judge of qualifications. The Board of Aldermen shall be the judge of the election and qualifications of its members and of the grounds for fortune of office and for that purpose the board of aldermen shall have the power to subpoena witnesses administer oaths and require the production of evidence a member charged with conduct constituting grounds for fortune of their office shall be entitled to a public hearing on demand decisions made by the board under this section shall be subject to review by the courts Again, most of this came from the MML or other charters. That, okay. And my question which was, uh, I'm just clarifying again, where it says, uh, shall be the judge of the elections and qualifications of its members. It's referring to elections of its appointed members? Or? Yeah, yeah that's correct. It's not not the actual. It's, it's not referring to the elections, obviously, like, you know, an individual being elected from the reward. That's obviously deferred to, you know, other authority like the Texas County Election Board, etc. So do we need to clarify that? Well, we could. I mean, we could. I was just thinking about that. If you want to clarify that, on the last sentence there, it says, decisions made by this board under the section shall be, shall be subject to review by the courts. Maybe you can add, um, and um, election authorities. Yeah, or like, yeah, or local, but that, that just won't make me like, know what the state So I just had to write down at the end, maybe, at an election authorities. Because that, that implies Jackson County or the state of Missouri, whatever. I mean, honestly, you cannot include that still, and it's not like it's, you're going to change their oversight of it. You legally can't. So, I mean, but this board feels more comfortable adding that little word or two at the end of this line. All right, Lisa's got a question. Rather than leaving it open ended with elections, since that was a question I had as well, can we just say be a judge of the elections of its appointed members? And that way we don't have to worry about the rest of it. I wish it was written in here like we discussed yesterday. I, I know, but that was the original discussion we had. I, what, what do you it was mean? written differently. All right, hold on. Let's. I'm just wondering if, 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 if your intention is to say election, election. I'm fine with that. I'm fine. I'm just saying, either or, you can either put the end about the, uh, you know, like election authorities or with qualifications for election or appointed members. Either or, it's, it serves the same purpose. So, I'm fine. Okay. It seems like it would, yeah, it would make sense to do elections of appointed members, and that way it kind of clarifies it before you get all the way Point of order. Yes. I have a question about this work that was brought together for this evening. Was this done by a committee, and, and uh, was it done in an open meeting? No, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I actually called Jason to try to get clarification on some of his things from comments that I had. And then I, we also got a hold of Lisa to make sure that because she was printing it, that she would get the information. And from what I'm hearing, there was discussion amongst three, maybe four people on this. And I didn't know about it. Um, I didn't hear any meeting call. I'm concerned about sunshine laws. Okay. And I'm concerned about my lack of ability or lack of opportunity to um, take part in, in something like this. I, I don't think that was the intent. I mean, I, I just wanted to get clarification from Jason on a couple of issues because of what happened at the last meeting. And I didn't want to have three different versions of printed off material here, so I discussed with him and then with Lisa. And Jason, you can add whatever you want to that. I mean, we weren't, we weren't trying to force a meeting, just get clarification on what was already there. So then we can have a discussion, an open discussion on it right now. And that's what we're doing, we're having an open discussion on it right now. I don't feel that there would be open discussion over materials that haven't been openly discussed in their, in, in their production. I mean, this, this, this work was obviously gathered more than, than a couple of people, I and mean, it's, it's, I think, I'll let, it's, I'll it's, it's all the question about how this work is being accomplished. Uh, this, um, this work has been influenced by the people, that's correct, um, but this work has also been submitted to several well, actually, first one I originally submitted to this commission over email, um, which I did ask during such, you know, obviously let me know if, if you have anything you'd like to talk about and that, but uh, months ago. This was originally submitted months ago to this commission over email. And that email was referred to the right time, or to the official records and everything we've been told about. Yes. Was there a meeting? Were you all physically in one place? Yes, there was. Okay, so it was more than just a question, a few discussion items on the phone. Well, I mean, I think you guys elected officers to try to get control of what was going on. And well, wait, okay, here's... And it's not a subcommittee, right? And, and how many does it take to actually... It takes four to have a quorum, so I mean, we haven't done anything. I didn't say you had. But I do know that I'm sitting here and I'm listening to discussion from two people who are there saying, well, this is what we agreed on yesterday. And the rest of us are standing here watching. And it kind of makes it sound like, well, you've made a decision and we'll just come over here and say, golly gee, thanks. I've um, I, I, I been mean, 3.7 judge of qualifications. I, I think Lisa's suggestion is a good one of the election of its appointed members. But it's a discussion that probably should be held in public session and could be just as well solved here. Yeah, that's my point on that. Was it not just held here? During this entirety, no. I, I think if the accusation is that a couple of people sat down and tried to produce some work, I think it's, I think it's a, a, an inappropriate accusation. I know that I've had individual conversations with
just now bringing it up. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Let's record up there. Jim, go ahead, please. That's not going anywhere. Mr. Chairman, I think it would be appropriate <clears throat> that <clears throat> to end this discussion now, I think that you should perhaps call um, an animal or someone who understands the Sunshine Law to determine whether or not we fall under the Sunshine Law and what our limitations are on computers in discussing politics. We, we have done that, and we even got a book when we were sworn in on the Sunshine Law. Okay. And I, and so then, in fact, I would, my understanding that being true, that we might have a violation here. Yeah. Lisa, would you qualify, please? Because even if three people are at, even if three people are, or, or two people are at, even at a party, start talking about board policy, that's a violation of Sunshine Law. Oh, Steve, asking to speak on this. You have to have four people, at least. Right. Go ahead, Lisa. Because we did get clarification on this, we actually asked. And, and Teresa and Henry also, at the very beginning, before we um, got sworn in, also clarified an email about that. Um, so, if I could get back, would, Jason, would you take a friendly minute to say something to the effect of election as appointed members and qualifications? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. I'll put down again. The first sentence the Board of Law shall be the judge of the election of appointed members and um, the qualifications. Uh, so, if it's appointed members or any appointed members anywhere? Yeah, that would be fine. I don't know which one you prefer. Appointed members is fine. Okay. Now, can you give clarification for Jim first? On, he wants a clarification on the Sunshine Law and the public. No, I, you said that, and I, I would assume that, that I'm just going to repeat what you said so I understand it, that, that one, I mean, two to three, all the one or commissioners can be together at any place they choose to discuss policy.